Heel gives up his dribble. Shot clock is winding down. Kevin Durant, the last line of defense with the rejection of Turner. Another day, another box car watching day. Episode, I don't know, 13. Uh, let's get right into it as the Kings pick up their second win on the season as they come back on the Charlotte Hornets. The Kings started off as usual playing no defense, but then they stepped it up. Kevin Herder keeps being a great scorer, even though his defense was really bad. Uh, it has been a little better since, you know, he got kind of benched for a game. De'Aaron Fox had to leave the game, which is really rough for them, but uh, they won despite that. As Davion Mitchell really stepped up his game, 23 points, he made some incredible clutch shots, he was sensational all night, he, he got his, you know, chance and took it, took it fully. The only problem is, you know, De'Aaron Fox is gonna be back, how do you, you know, play, play his minutes, then it's just a weird combo in Sacramento, but good for them after a really rough start. As for the Hornets, PJ Washington continues to be really good this season, 28-5-3. And Dennis Smith Jr. is one of my favorite stories of the season, 15, 7, 8 and 6 steals. He was, uh, man, he was really good out there. It, uh, you know, kinda sad that Lamelo has to come back and he's gonna have a reduced role, but he found his home a little bit and, you know, he's gonna be a backup point guard somewhere and a really good one if he continues his play up like this, so there's that and that's a good sign for you know, Charlotte and a good thing for him and you just love to see stories like that after, you know, a guy who was seemingly out of the league finds his footing all of a sudden. <laughs> the Sixers beat the Wizards without Joel Embiid, as <laughs> James Harden seems to have that one play where he, where the, you know, the, his defender is pushed off or falls down, he steps it back and has a wide open three-pointer, it feels like there is, there is one play like this every game. <laughs> it's kind of weird, um, and he was really good today, 17 assists, sensational playmaking day from him, and everyone in the starting lineup plays really good for the Sixers, but the bench also played really well. Georgie Sniang had 12 points, Montrez Harrell actually had good minutes, Matty Steibel was there defending really well, Daniel House defending really well, just overall good team performance from them, they seem to get back on track. Tyrese Maxi 28 3 and 3. It's interesting to see how well they played without Embiid, actually. Well, not saying Embiid is the problem, just say just pointing out that they played really well without him. That's a good sign for them, not a you know bad sign. And the Wizards keep, you know, Kyle Kuzma started well and now he's just has five shots. I don't know what, what's wrong there. Bradley Beal has been poor to start the season. He has not, you know, shown up when it mattered and he had some costly turnovers in this game, but the Wizards almost came back, almost had a chance. And Kristaps Porzingis, 32 and 9, he's been really good and healthy. So that's a good sign, otherwise, well, the Wizards are the Wizards. Kevin Durant finally steps it up, like, really steps it up, and the Nets beat the Pacers. It really seems like if you need a good game, you need to play against the Nets. Chris Duarte obviously played against them uh, two days ago, but he had his best game of the season, maybe of his life. He finally had a good game, 30 points, 3 rebounds, 5 of 10, 10 of 15 shooting. A really good game from him, but he healed 22 points. Miles Turner was out there getting bullied by Nick Claxton, that was sad to see, especially after the podcast where he was talking about what, that the Lakers should essentially need him. I don't know what the hell that was. Uh, Benedict Maturin, 16 points, he's still been really good. James Johnson has been really solid for them also, which is interesting to see. Tyrese Halliburton had his first dud of a game this season. Well, and it happens. 11, 8 and 5. And the Brooklyn Nets pick up their much needed win. Kevin Durant finally, you know, showed me more what I wanted to see. 36, 9 and 7, 3 blo one block that was sensational on Miles Turner. Or Nick Claxton, you know, has been really solid overall. And he's, you know, essentially been one of their best, I mean, obviously one of their best players, but like their third best player has been Nick Laxton to start the season, which probably isn't good for you overall, but I just want to point that out. Kyrie, I don't want to talk about him, he was good. Um, Darren Sharp get, got some minutes, he scored, and not much more to add. Ben Simmons didn't play, I'm not sure what, I, I think I heard it was a tight hamstring, and he should play tonight as they play a back-to-back. -back. 
But there has not been, you know, confirmed yet. <laughs> the Hawks get blown out by the Raptors, who are of... <clears throat> the Hawks get blown out by the Raptors. As Stat News put it on Twitter, had a cripple double. When he had 14 points, 10 assists, 10 turnovers. Just... It was a rough night for Trey Young. Dejante Mori was still really good, 20, 4 and 9. And John Collins has been bad with his three uh, lately. I think he's like one of 17 in his last three games or so. And Onyeka Okongwu continues to be a really good positive for them. He had eight, five and one of the bench with two blocks. And with Krejci played. My guy from Czech Republic played. He scored five points that made me happy. Probably, you know, he's only gonna, only gonna play in games where they get blown out or they blow someone out. So I'm happy to actually see him play <laughs> something at least uh, about this game. And the Raptors are really good. They missed Van, Van Fleet today, but Scotty Barnes played point guard and he was really great out there. He made five threes, 21, 7 and 8. Sensational play from him at the point guard position. Gary Trent continues to be really, really solid. Christian Coloco, who started, was really good. Pascal continuing his All NBA season 31, 12, and 6. All NBA play just really great from Pascal Siakam. And OG Anunobi is one of the best defenders out there. If, if he plays enough games, he's gonna make all defensive first team. Or, probably. If not first team, 100% has to make the second team. But if he stays healthy, he, there is no way he does not make. Uh, all in defensive first team, sensational defense, he's just sensational on defense and their bench was even solid, some people got some minutes and they're still missing um, Odo Porter Jr. which I can't wait to actually see him since you know he was with my Warriors last year the Bucks stay undefeated and hold off the Pistons who are on a back-to-back who were on the back who were on a back-to-back Bojan Bogdanovic, 23, 4-2, two, 2 steals, he was really good Kate Cunningham has been really solid overall this week and lately he had 27, 6 and 7. Jaden Ivey contributed 19, Hamidou Diallo had 13 but their bench otherwise was you know not contributing. Essentially even though when they played they were you know in a plus but as I keep pointing out it's just kind of a fake stat when you watch the game but it was mostly Sadiq Bay and Isaiah Stewart not producing as well as they produced against my Warriors. And the Bucks, well, Giannis, 31, 7 and 2, but he was not great this game. It felt like he was kind of coasting. But, you know, Giannis coasting is better than most players in the NBA. Grayson Allen had to leave. I am think he didn't come back. He had some issue. Uh, Brook Lopez was really good, as he has been these last few games, 24 and 9. Juru Holiday, 25, 7 and 10. He keeps having great games all of a sudden. Well, so, uh, he has really stepped it up now. You know, rough start a little bit to the season, but he has had some really great games. Boy Portis, 15 and 12. Just, you know, typical Milwaukee stuff. The Jazz blow the Grizzlies as they stay, you know, up top the Western Conference. And, well, Desmond Bain didn't play for the Grizzlies and they didn't have it. They didn't play good defense. Ja got, you know, 37 points, he attacked, he was still really good offensively, but their defense was really lacking. Dylan Brooks had 19 points on 16 shots, Tyus Jones had 12 on 9 shots, and just was not good enough defensively tonight on the Jazz, who, you know, Lori Markanen, 11 of 15 in 31 minutes, 31 points, 11 rebounds, 2 assists, 4 blocks, he has been a revelation. Uh, Eurobasket, uh, you know, you could see it in him that he had has this in him, and now he's you know finally showing out in the NBA. He's proven out to be a really great player. We'll see, you know, if he keeps this up. Blah blah blah. We know, but for now he's been sensational. And otherwise, you know, everyone else in the starting line wasn't as great. Mike Conley had a really good minutes, 15, 2 and 5. Malik Beasley off the bench, 18. Sexton, 15. Taylor Horton Tucker even with 13. A lot of good play for the Jazz, who are one of the best... <coughs> for the Jazz, who are one of the best stories in the NBA, man. <laughs> who would have guessed, really, right? When you look at the standings right now, like, when you look at the Eastern Conference, it's kind of what you expected, I, I, I think. Maybe, you know, obviously the Nets and Heat probably were expected to be a little higher, but the top six is pretty, you know, as expected, I would say. 
and Western Conference is just Portland. We wouldn't have thought that. Phoenix, I didn't think that. They've proven me wrong. Utah, San Antonio, and then it's a bunch of 4 3 3 3 3 teams. And it's been a really interesting. Really interesting. But <clears throat> back to our last game of the day as Paul George steps up, bounces back, hits the game winner against the Rockets as, you know, Houston, well, uh, Jabari Smith still. I mean, Jabari Smith and Jalen Green, man. Ah, man. I, ho I hope they get it right with their offense. But it has not been pretty for them. But they played some solid, you know, game. Kenyon Martin was really good off the bench, 23 points. And they played tough on the Clippers. And, you know, it's good to see. But it's all about Jalen Green and Jabari Smith in the end. And uh, it has been rough. Rough, rough. Paul George, 15 of 26. 35, 9 and 8. 6 steals, 2 blocks. He bounced his back. He was sensational. He made clutch shots after clutch shot. And he won them the game essentially by himself because everyone else was really bad. Well, not really bad, but not great. Uh, not not great by any means necessary, you know. So that's a good win for the Clippers. They needed this one also. We'll see. We'll see what happens with Kawhi. He's out for another road trip. I think it's the next three games still. Maybe two games without this. I'm not pretty sure, but he's out for some time still. It's it's interesting. I'll maybe make a separate video about Kawhi and you know what's going on there, and we will ask the questions there. As for tonight, we got some really good games. Bulls Nets. I mean, really good games. Whatever you wanna call them. Bulls Nets should be fun. Warriors Heat. Well, for me, it probably won't be fun since the Warriors even had a day off. It's gonna be ugly. Magic Thunder is maybe for some fine schmeckers like me. Suns Steelers should be also really good. And it's a, you know, chill slate, you don't need to watch as many games, it's good good for me essentially, even though I love watching more basketball, but it's a little bit, you know, easier on my schedule, and that about does it, I guess, and I'll see you all in the next video, next box crouching, I don't know what the fuck I'm rambling here. <laughs>